welcome back everyone uh, in this lecture i am going to tell you like uh, algorithmically how to recover a given root system from its uh, carton matrix so in the last lecture we actually proved that uh, uh, carton matrices determines root systems uniquely up to isomorphism so we will also see algorithmically how one can actually recover the root systems so let us fix some notations and then uh, we will actually continue so you take phi to be a root system inside uh, the euclidean space uh, capital e so we say that uh, let's say uh, only the carton matrices so carton uh, integers are known to us so carton matrix by definition so this is the carton matrix of phi so the thing is uh, when we say carton matrix it is already assumed that uh, it is coming from some root system phi okay it is a positive definite matrix defined to be uh, the carton integers alpha i alpha j and this is l by l matrix where i j varies over l so let's say we uh, know all these uh, carton integers so and then we want to uh, reconstruct uh, uh, entire root system first of all uh, recall some facts that we have already proved so recall that so again pi is already given because once the carton matrix is given then pi is also given which is uh, we label it as alpha 1 etc alpha l so what we have proved so given beta from phi plus so we can write beta as some beta 1 plus etc plus beta t where each beta i comes from pi such that so this partial sum beta i plus etc plus beta t it is always a positive root so you can write always beta as sum of this positive roots and then if you break at any point then it is again positive root sum of remaining terms again positive root and note that the inner product between beta alpha is always non negative for all alpha beta inside pi and alpha not equal to beta so in in this also immediately implies or as a consequence we can see that because pi form a base so we also proved that beta minus alpha is not a root for all alpha beta inside pi such that alpha not equal to beta so these are all things we have already proved so we also observed something about uh, this alpha string through beta if we take alpha string uh, through beta so for alpha beta now any roots so the alpha string uh, through beta so that is defined to be s of beta comma alpha so which is you start with beta and then see how much you can add a multiple of alpha and then how much you can subtract multiple of alpha let's say you can do up to uh, beta minus r alpha and then beta plus q alpha so we proved that this entire chain lies inside phi and q and r chosen to be max such that uh, this interval lies inside phi so then there is a relationship between uh, this r minus q and this carton integer beta alpha so the relationship given by the carton integer beta alpha is equal to r minus q so all this information uh, that we have already proved uh, before so we are going to use this in our algorithm so uh, what we will do uh, we will recover the roots of phi uh, using the height of the roots okay so for each height we will just uh, recover the roots suppose height of alpha is 1 alpha is in phi and then height of alpha is 1 so it is first to note that it is enough to recover only the positive roots because all the negative roots are just negative of positive roots so so we first reduce to the positive roots so if alpha is in phi plus and height of alpha is 1 so then it is immediate that alpha must be inside pi so basically this is characterization of height one elements so height of alpha is 1 if and only for alpha in pi 
but all the elements of pi are already known. So, pi is given to be alpha 1 etcetera alpha L. So, now what is about height 2 elements? So, to get height 2 elements we have to sum 2 uh, different roots because the only multiple of uh, any root is plus or minus alpha. So, to get up to get uh, height 2 root what we need to do we have to take alpha i and then sum it with alpha j for some j. So, this must so, so these are all the only possible uh, height 2 roots, but you can see that since alpha i minus alpha j is never a root. So, then if you con consider this alpha i string through this uh, alpha j. So, then it will exactly start with alpha j and then you keep adding alpha i and so on up to some alpha j plus q alpha i. So, now you can see that this q must be given to be minus alpha j comma alpha i. So, this uh, this is the case. So, in particularly since we know this kata number uh, alpha j alpha i, so that angled alpha j alpha i in particularly we know this q. So, in particularly we know all this alpha i string through alpha j. So, all these strings can be recovered in particularly height 2 elements can be recovered. So, height 2 elements of phi are recovered. So, now uh, you can also see that in case if you are going to actually uh, if we take height of alpha to be 2 ok. If you are interested in recurring, recurring uh, this height 3 elements, so then you have to start with height uh, 2 element and then you can add some alpha i. So, that is the that is the way to get height 3 elements. So, let us say alpha is in phi such that height of alpha is 2. So, then you can see that you can actually max uh, you can subtract alpha i twice from alpha for any alpha i in, in phi. So, let us ok. So, let us say you have alpha which has height 2. So, then take alpha i from pi ok. Now, look at alpha i string through this uh, alpha. So, then you know that this has to start with alpha and then you will be adding some alpha i and so on some alpha plus q alpha i it will end and similarly you will be subtracting some alpha i and then it will end alpha minus alpha i. So, the very first climb this r must be at most 1. Why that is the case? since height of alpha is 2. So, you cannot subtract uh, alpha i twice ok. If you subtract alpha i twice then height will go down by 2 then alpha minus 2 alpha i will become 0. So, that forces alpha will be multiple of alpha i that is not the case. So, then r must be at most 1. So, you can see that when you can actually subtract that again you can get it from the earlier result that we proved if alpha alpha i is actually uh, positive. So, then uh, we will be able to subtract alpha i from alpha ok. So, in in a way we have some understanding of determining this r ok. So, this integer r either it can be 0 or 1 ok. So, for each root alpha of height 2 the integer r for the string alpha is string through alpha can be determined. So, that is because it can be at most 1 and we have some way of understanding when it can be 1. 
So, from this you can immediately determine what is q, q is because uh, q is equal to r minus uh, this uh, cartan integer alpha and alpha i. Since we have determined all the height 2 elements already, so that means alpha alpha i this cartan integer is also determined for all alpha height 2 alpha. So, that means this is also now determined. So, once this is determined, so that means this entire uh, alpha i string through uh, alpha v is determined. So, that way we have determined for example, height 3 elements. Okay. So, now uh, using our earlier result that any positive root can be written as sum of the simple roots, you can see that with this procedure if you go further and further and at some point okay, some finitely many steps you will be able to recover all possible roots of phi. Okay. So, this way we can recover all possible roots or positive roots of phi. So, this algorithm is actually somewhat uh, very much working algorithm. For example, uh, you can actually try to uh, use. Uh, so, for example, you can do this rank 2 case or later maybe I will actually uh, list all the Cartan matrices uh, that are also that are actually uh, associated with the irreducible root systems. So, you can take rank 3 Cartan matrices and then use this algorithm and then determine all possible roots. So, that way you can convince this algorithm works. Okay. So, now uh, once we have defined this Cartan matrix, uh, it is easy to define what is called this Cockster graph and uh, Dinkin diagrams. Okay. So, these, these are all the important uh, things that are used in order to classify this uh, finite irreducible root system. So, what are all the Cockster graphs and Dinkin diagrams? Okay, so, here is the definition. So, again what we do we start with this uh, Cartan matrix in particularly uh, we take your uh, base pi which is sitting inside phi then pi you label it as alpha 1 etcetera alpha l. So, note that given uh, two distinct roots Okay, so, if alpha, beta both are let us say distinct roots and positive roots. So, then if you just uh, compute this term uh, the product of this Cartan integer associated with alpha, beta and then beta alpha we have seen that. So, this must be one of this following numbers either 0, 1, 2 or 3. Since, uh, beta alpha the inner product is positive. So, this has to be positive uh, sorry non negative integer. So, this can take value from 0 1 2 3. So, this is something we know already. So, now what is the Cockster graph? Cockster graph now easy to define using these numbers. So, you take Cockster graph to be. So, what are all the vertices? The vertices are nothing but all the simple roots. So, that is capital pi. So, there are L vertices. So, now what we do we join ith and jth simple root by this uh, number alpha i beta sorry alpha i alpha j. Okay. So, what let us say what are the edges. So, draw alpha i alpha j times alpha j alpha i number of edges between ith and jth vertex or simple root. Okay. For example, if we take B 2, so then there are only 2 uh, simple roots let them let us call them 1 and 2. So, then you know that if alpha beta and beta alpha, so this has to be 2 there. So, the Cockster graph corresponding to B 2 will look like this. 
for G 2 again this number alpha beta times beta alpha. So, this is going to be 3. So, for G 2 so there will be 3 edges between 1 and 2. So, these are all the Coxter graphs. Of course, the Coxter, gra Coxter graph determines the numbers uh, the cotton integers alpha i, i alpha j in case all the roots have equal length. But we have already seen that that is not the case for example, B 2 and G 2 they have uh, uh, different root, root lengths exactly for irreducible root, root system we have seen that at most 2 root lengths can occur. So, and ex exactly B 2 and G 2 have 2 distinct root lengths. So, in this case the graph that actually fails to tell us which of a pair of vertices should correspond to your short simple root and which to a long simple root. So, in particularly it Coxter graph is not completely recovering uh, what we wanted. Okay. For that purpose what we do we introduce what is called this Dinkin diagram. Of course, the Dinkin diagram the base graph will be same as Coxter graph. So, all we do is we just put arrow between uh, long root and short root. So, basically we can add an arrow pointing to the shorter of the two roots. So, let us say alpha and beta. So, these are all two roots and then there, there are some edges between them. If beta is actually a short root you put arrow from alpha to beta. So, the point of this arrow should always point towards the short root. Okay. So, this way we get uh, what is called Dinkin diagram. For example, the B 2 Dinkin diagram will look like alpha and beta 2 and then the G 2 Dinkin diagram will look like this. So, because alpha 1 is actually long root in G 2. Okay, so, this this is what happens. So, now given the diagram it is actually easy to recover uh, given the Dinkin diagram it is easy to recover the Cartan matrix and we already seen that uh, how to recover the root system from the Cartan matrix. Okay. For example, I will leave it as exercise. So, this the following diagram corresponds to the root system F 4 we still have not constructed what is F 4, but, uh, but it is interesting exercise to actually get the information about F 4 directly from the root from the Dinkin diagram. So, the Dinkin diagram of F 4 looks like as follows you take these 4 uh, uh, vertices and then you put edge between them like this and then you, you put an arrow from uh, 2 to 3. Okay, so, 1, 2, 3, 4 you take. So, for example, it is clear that uh, if we take the dual of F 4, okay, so the dual will be just a flipped thing. So, then you can see that uh, the dual of F 4 will be naturally isomorphic to F 4. So, this is something you can observe immediately from the Dinkin diagram. So, now uh, what is the Cartan matrix? So, the Cartan matrix, so let us let us try to do it. Okay. So, for example, if we take alpha 1, alpha 2 and then alpha 2, alpha 1. So, then the product is exactly equal to 1 and note that the norm of alpha 1 is same as uh, norm of alpha 2 because both uh, have this uh, only one edge between them. So, now if you uh, try to actually uh, recover the matrix you can see that. So, it is a 4 by 5, 4 by 4 matrix. So, the diagonal entries all of them should be 2 because uh, the inner product alpha beta. So, beta alpha this kata number. So, this is going to be exactly equal to twice uh, beta alpha sorry. So, when beta equal to alpha what we are going to get? So, going to get 2 alpha alpha divided by alpha alpha times 2 alpha alpha divided by alpha alpha. So, this 2 get cancelled. So, then you get 4 here. Okay. Uh, so, but uh, yeah. So, we have actually uh, 
joined only ith and uh, jth simple root by this product okay uh, for the diagonal thing oh diagonal thing we already know how to fill so the diagonal thing is going to be not the product it is just uh, the kata number alpha alpha which is 2 that we know so the diagonal entries should be 2 for any uh, the kata matrix that is obvious so now since this product uh, alpha alpha 1 alpha 2 alpha 2 is is 1 and the inner product alpha 1 alpha 2 is always negative uh, or non positive so in particularly the entry uh, 1 2 and uh, 2 uh, 2 1 must be minus 1 minus 1 and similarly you can see that for 3 4 again this is minus 1 and minus 1 and uh, 1 is orthogonal to 3 1 is orthogonal to 4 because there is no edge between 1 and 3 and 1 and 4 and similarly uh, 3 uh, 1 3 is also 0 and 1 4 is also 0 uh, now uh, 2 4 there is no edge between 2 and 4 so 2 4 is uh, 0 and 4 2 is 0 and we have to determine only these two uh, entries uh, and those two entries you can see that so that is recorded here so alpha 2 alpha 3 this inner product alpha 3 alpha 2 that must be equal to 2 now the arrow points towards 3 so that means the norm of alpha 3 is less than or equal to norm of alpha 2 so that means uh, these both these numbers are non positive integers and alpha 3 has norm lesser than alpha 2 that makes that that cotton integer alpha 2 alpha 3 is exactly uh, minus 2 that is a 2 3 entry so this is minus 2 and this is minus 1 so this way we can recover the cotton matrix directly from the dingen diagram and we already seen algorithm to recover uh, root system from this Cartan matrix. So, that way uh, we can recover completely root system from the Dinkin diagram. So, I will just state the first of all classification theorem and then later in maybe in the next class I will prove the classification theorem. So, what is the classification theorem? So, basically what it says if you start with irreducible root system because we already shown that any given root system can be written as direct sum of uh, finitely many irreducible root system. So, that allows us to only classify uh, irreducible root systems. So, in particularly equivalently we can uh, prove that uh, uh, we have to only classify the connected Dinkin diagrams. Okay. So, maybe I will leave it as exercise this is something you check and uh, phi is uh, irreducible if and only if the Dinkin diagram of phi is connected. It is basically connected uh, directed graph that is all. Okay. So, you start with phi which is irreducible root system of rank let us say L. So, and it is Dinkin diagram must be one of the following. Okay. So, then if this is the case, so then it is Dinkin diagram has only the following specific choices is one of the following. Of course, each has L vertices. So, what are all the possibilities? So, let us see. So, the very first type is called AL. So, AL where L is less than greater than or equal to 1. So, what is this? So, this is just this path 1, 2, 3, L minus 1, yeah. So, this is the diagram. So, then we have what is called B L. So, which is L greater than or equal to 2. So, this is starts from 1, 2 etcetera. So, where the last thing is actually L minus 1 L and the arrow is pointed from L minus 1 to L. And there is something called C L. So, again this is I will put 
one arrow here this is L minus 2 uh, up to this 1 to L minus 1 they, they are all sim they are all having same length and L minus 1 and L they have different lengths. For C L you assume to be L greater than or equal to 3. So, then it is exactly the dual of B L. So, you take 1, 2 etcetera and then L minus 2, L minus 1. So, now you put double edge here, but now you change the arrow, you just point towards here. So, C L is exactly B L dual and C 2 is exactly B 2. So, there is no difference. But anyway, like we know we do not identify, so we are giving different label to avoid the repeat repetition, okay. That is why we are choosing the labels very carefully. So, now there is this DL which is L greater than or equal to 4, and then the diagram looks as follows. So, 1, 2, and then here l and l minus 1. So, this l and l minus 1 they are called spin nodes and then you have l minus 2 here and l minus 3. So, this is the type d l and this type a to d they are called classical types, classical types root systems. Okay. So, this is four classes of infinite families of root systems okay. for each l we we have this infinitely many l possible and this a l b l c l d l they are all uh, irreducible root system of classical types. So, now we have what is called exceptional types. So, exceptional types there are 5 of them. So, exceptional types. So, there are 5 of them basically E 6, E 7, E 8, so, they are one family and then you have F 4 and G 2. So, they are another family. Okay. So, what is E 6? How E 6 looks like? So, E 6 exactly looks like follows. You take these 5 vertices here and then you add one vertex here. So, as labeling, so we choose this particular labeling to make sure that uh, this diagram exactly looks like this. Okay. So, there is a specific reason to choose this labeling and it will be very clear when we actually define them and then uh, uh, we will actually identify the particular base okay. that time it will be very clear. So, E 7 again E 7 looks like uh, extension of E 6. So, basically you take E 6 and then add one more root to this and here again you take this. So, this is 1, 3, 4, 2 and then 5, 6, 7. So, note that the part of this, okay, this part exactly uh, equal to E 6. Okay. So, in some sense this embeddings of uh, Dinkin diagrams, okay, we will see later what they corresponds to in terms of Lie algebras. So, we can prove that they corresponds to actually embedding of Lie algebras. Okay, so, what is E 8? Again E 8 is extension of uh, uh, e, e 7. So, you take 7 vertices like this 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and then as before you add one vertex here. This is 2, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So, again you can see that E 6 is contained in E 7, E 7 is contained in E 8. So, now we have what is F 4, we have already seen what is F 4. F 4 we take this 4 vertices and then you put arrow here and then you label them 1, 2, 3, 4 and there is this G 2. So, G 2 also we have seen already. So, G 2 is just uh, 2 vertices, so rank 2 and then 3 edges between them and then you say the first vertex is actually small short root, the second vertex is long root. Okay. So, we will prove tomorrow that um, in the next class uh, 
the Dinkin diagrams of this irreducible root system, they have only the following choices. So, there are these four uh, infinitely many okay, infinite classes of classical types root system A L, B L, C L and D L and these uh, there are these five exceptional types E 6, E 7, E 8 and F 4 and G 2. So, these are all the only Dinkin diagrams that are possible. And we will also see, so this is actually a theorem uh, that for each uh, Dinkin diagram that we have here. So, we will be able to construct actually uh, root system corresponding to uh, that Dinkin diagram. Again that I will do it in the next class. So, what is the second theorem? So, this is the second big theorem. Again this is not that hard, but the first two theorem is actually very hard classifying them. So, for each Dinkin diagram, so that is listed in this A to G of type this A to G, there exist an irreducible root system having the given diagram. So, that means for each diagram here we have one irreducible root system. So, that means this list exhausts completely all the irreducible root system and it completely classifies all the irreducible root system up to isomorphism. Okay. So, this is our final results about uh, root system. Uh, so, we will actually complete the proof of this uh, classification in the next class and I will also outline how to actually get uh, this all these root systems of type A to G in the next class. So, I will stop here, yeah, thanks.